Hey everybody, happy Friday and welcome to another edition of Illustration Masterclass. You know, uh, before I um, got into being a freelance illustrator, I worked at a graphic design firm here, uh, Shapiro Walker Design, uh, for quite a while. And um, one of the great things I got to do there was design dozens and dozens of, of logos. And the fun thing was that being uh, an illustrator, I got to approach every one of those logos from sort of a different point of view. I was coming at it as somebody who likes to draw. And um, a lot of my design heroes are people who also love to draw. People like Milton Glaser, for example, uh, who recently died. Uh, but wow, what a long and wonderful life he had. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really a fan of logos that um, you can tell that the person who who designed them is somebody who likes to draw. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about that. Some of the advantages you have if you're a person who draws and wants to take, tackle some logo design work um, and some of the things uh, that make it really fun, as well as some of the challenges, of course, and what to think about when you are doing uh, illustrated logos. Um, and some of those things are obvious, like, you know, scalability, how small can you make it and still have it be legible, etc. cetera. Um, and uh, some of the things may be a little less obvious, but we'll talk about all of that. We'll look at some samples of work uh, that I have just from some recent projects as well as some not so recent projects. And at the end, I'll probably do a little bit of an experiment here where I'll just do some sketches for a make-believe uh, coffee shop, um, or rather a, a coffee brand, pardon me, and uh, we'll have some fun with that. Okay, so first let's say hi to some folks who are joining us over here. Now, if you're watching over on YouTube or on Twitter, then uh, I am not following the comments or chat. Um, but feel free to watch wherever you like. If you do want to participate in the chat, ask me questions, uh, chat with some other nice folks who are here. We are at Behance, and that is at be.net slash Adobe Live. Be.net slash Adobe Live. You'll see that up on the screen right now. Um, let's say hi to some folks. Emmanuel, nice to see you. Hello, Steve. Hi, Cryo. Hi, RB. I see uh, Wade is here as well. What's up? Hey, Jack. Nice to see you as well. Um, and I see some folks are joining in. Hi, Misty, uh, over on the YouTube as well. Um, so everybody, thanks for being here and let's get started. So uh, just to kick things off, I'll kick it over to um, Photoshop here. And we'll take a look at a couple things. Uh, here's something I'm, I'm doing with a, a buddy of mine um, just for a local bookstore. We're gonna do a series of these, um, these uh, dragons at different ages for different uh, programs over at Bookmarks, one of my favorite bookstores here in the area. Um, and if you do live in the area, be sure to go to Bookmarks and buy your books. Support local bookstores, please. Um, yeah, so one of the things about this that's so fun is, of course, it's character design and um, the opportunity to do something really simple and make sure that if I were to do this, you'd still say, oh yeah, it's a little dragon reading a book. So um, these are some of the things I want to talk about, which is what do you do about silhouette? So if you're going to be designing a character that's going to be a logo, um, then you want to think about stuff like this. Uh, if I were to get rid of all this business on the inside, okay, we'll just do that for a moment. We'll just do this as an experiment. All right, so I'll just select away all this stuff right here. All righty. And um, we'll do this as well. We'll come in through here. And we're just going to leave sort of the space where um, we'll leave some of that some of that negative space alone right there. But I'm going to do this, okay? And we'll come in here, and we'll just do this. So imagine this whole thing is just kind of a one big shape. All right, there we go. We want people to still be able to look at that and say, oh, I recognize the head of a little dragon, a little wing, and there's the back and the tail and little feet and things like that. Now you might not see the book, but the key thing here is that it reads as a little dragon um, and it's important for that to work. Okay, now of course when we add the little negative space bits there, the white bits, um, everything reads twice as clearly. But do be thinking about this. If I had changed the angle in some way where maybe I can't reveal that tail, I can't show um, the wing and I can't show the shape of the head, uh, then this suddenly becomes really difficult to read and understand. These are the kinds of things you want to think about with logos if you're designing them. Um, does the silhouette, does the outline, does the general shape or do the general shapes 
read clearly as what you intend for them to read as uh, for the viewer and if not can you shift the angle of approach the camera angle so to speak for that character um, can you maybe even cheat things a little bit uh, and show things that maybe from a certain perspective aren't totally visible but will help for the character to read clearly these are things to be thinking about okay another thing to think about and I'm, a, I'm no great uh, type designer at all um, but do try and think about you know when you're working with the type even if you're a person who really specializes in the lettering side of things um, just open up this group right here uh, do be thinking about stuff like I have to shift that little thing over there um, about you know the balance for the letter the the weight here the line the the weight of these letters okay and these letter forms and then how, do these typefaces work well together and then what do you want to highlight what do you want to be larger or smaller how much space to re, uh, to leave here for a little bit of breathability and all these kinds of things so weights and um, type choices and things like uh, letter spacing kerning etc and how does that all relate to um, your your main uh, icon um, or rather the the mark that you're using right does that stuff all work nicely and if I were to get rid of these little guys here I could still use this um, anywhere just stick it on a t-shirt whatever um, think about taking a mark and then moving it through different um, uh, different uh, you know materials and things both print and online etc at different sizes and for different purposes another thing about this is it all works as a single color um, and sometimes people say well you don't have to worry about that so much anymore because everything's online everything's full color not so not so there are many times where something is going to be reproduced uh, in print in some format maybe it's going to be on some water bottle or some notebook or whatever um, and it's going to be distributed uh, as, a, as a freebie or whatever at an event you never know make sure that you can design a mark that could feasibly be um, either altered in some way and still recognizable or left as is or have the base of it be a single color mark um, I think this is still an important thing and a good practice uh, for logo designers as well um, now you notice the key thing here though is that as far as logos go this really is just a drawing it's not um, purely a type driven logo it's not uh, a logo that is um, making use of just a couple of simple like geometric shapes or anything like that this is me approaching things from the point of view of somebody who likes to draw and this is the solution um, now we'll move on here to what we see on the right which is this Winteridge uh, meets and this came through uh, a client in Ireland who basically um, they're they're making uh, these these beef products and they have these cows that uh, eat this very special um, these special grass and herbs and things that grow naturally in this part of Ireland and so really kind of the thing that they are excited about is celebrating what it is that goes into this cow's diet okay and that's really kind of the special thing so my idea here was I wanted to draw a, the head of a cow and I wanted to use uh, these plant elements to design um, that head and so that was my idea that was what I was wanting to do and this is the great thing about about drawing is that you simply can sit sit there and you can start to sketch and come up with things and so I was just thinking about you know these kinds of shapes like leaves right and and flowers and shapes like this okay and then trying to figure out how can I have with this as my base right how can I design something that will read as a cow's head right and then also feel organic and feel like there are these plant forms and whatnot you notice I have symmetry turned on here I'll just go ahead and turn that off for a moment because I was using that um, when I was in the drawing phase obviously for this now that was the idea and you can see here if I just open up a few layers how this process worked so this was me playing with this idea and trying to come up with something that if you were to look at it you say right away oh yeah I think I see the head of a cow um, and then here you can see uh, oops let me turn on this yeah this was another idea I had with the flowers or the eyes 
And um, I kind of like this. I think though, it's just a little too sort of cutesy and maybe too on the nose. Um, maybe if it had been a different kind of a brand, but this is this is sort of, you know, this stuff that is is being sold for this brand is a little on the higher end for, for price and whatnot. So I didn't want to go too cutesy with it. Um, here you can see a variation of that where I'm starting to take those forms. I'll leave that first one up so you can compare the two uh, where I'm actually encapsulating here that flower shape. And I think that's a bit more sophisticated. And then starting here, you can see leaving some open areas, leaving some spaces open, okay? Oh, uh, hey, thanks, Peter. Glad you like the Batman shirt. This is from um, Merry Little Batman, which is a Warner Brothers cartoon Batman that's coming out at Christmas. And I was uh, really lucky to be able to provide the animation team there, the art team, with some custom brushes. And so to thank me, they sent me this shirt, which I thought was really nice of them. So thank you, Warner Brothers animation team. You all are sweethearts. Um, got some other folks joining us here. Hello, hello. Bruce, I see, and, uh, and uh, Danielle, nice to see you as well. Hello, hello. Alessandra, nice to see you. Okay, so, um, here we have these these uh, two options. You can see things are starting to move in the right direction. Okay, I'm gonna turn those off for just a minute. Um, and let's see, there is where I really started to hit the nail on the head in terms of um, the the shapes that I thought you know were felt feeling balanced. Okay, some medium, some small, some large, etc. And what I what is happy about here is, and this is the thing when you when you draw a lot, you know, these are the kinds of things you just pay attention to, is like this one big line of action, there, getting able to have something that that goes all the way from the top, through the middle to the bottom, and gives me something to really latch onto there with a rhythm, and then coming off of that, with these small origin, ribbons, but everything having these S curve and C curve, sort of shapes. Right, and we all know that this creates movement and it creates a flow and it's pleasing to the eye. And also, depending on what it is that you're designing, in this case, you know, I'm thinking about plant life and I'm thinking about organic growth and so on, as well as, you know, a cow, which is an animal. And so the or organic nature, of course, of a living creature, etc. These are the kinds of um, marks that I want to make and the kinds of rhythms that I want to have there. And I want to just stop here for a moment and say that this is the kind of thing as well that if you're somebody who's comfortable drawing, um, you know, you get used to moving things in a certain way and having control of the instrument that you can do things that feel uh, like what you want. And um, if you don't have a uh, drawing skill or haven't done a lot of drawing, it's a lot more difficult to sort of realize something like this. Um, because if you're just playing with the pen tool and trying to arrange things and so on, um, it can be a little challenging. It's not that you couldn't get there, of course you could, and a lot of people are wizards with the pen tool. But I think that what I like is the ability to more quickly iterate when you know how to draw. Um, because you can just sketch, 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 and just run through a whole bunch of ideas in a matter of minutes to come up with something and then go to refine it. Um, if right out of the gate you're stuck using these more precise tools like the pen tool um, or other selections and things like that, um, this can definitely be a little slower. Uh, now, this is not to say there aren't people who figured out how to do this in a way that is just incredibly impressive. And um, uh, what's his name? Springs to mind. I, I can't remember anybody's names anymore. You have to forgive me. I think this is a sign of aging. Um, the guy out in uh, in uh, Portland who does those really fun logos. He's got a big beard. Uh, Draplin, I think. Aaron Draplin. Go watch one of his demos in Illustrator if you want to be blown away. He's really fun to watch. We've had him as an Adobe guest multiple times at Max and other places. So you get the idea though, right? You see how we're, we're making this come to life. And then if we pop back over to here, uh, you can see it in its in its final form here, along with the married with the type. Um, and uh, yeah, very happy with it. Client, uh, very, very happy with it. And it all just kind of worked out. Um, Funny thing to even think about, but facial features and sort of personality, all these things you can actually manipulate and make exactly what you want as well when you have a little bit of skill with drawing. So, you know, I really wanted the cow to look friendly. I wanted the a sort of long eyelash idea of the cows and I wanted the nostrils to be nostrils, but not like in your face nostrils, right? Proportions of the ears to everything else and the general shape. The other thing that I was excited about with this logo was this idea that you can with logo design, 
draw things that don't read right away as maybe one thing, but the viewer is rewarded with a little a little hit if they sit with it for a couple of seconds. So it might not be immediately evident when you look at this that it is the head of a cow, uh, but if you pause for a moment and pay attention and then notice what the product is, you're like, oh yeah, it's a cow. Kind of like the whole, you know, hidden arrow in the FedEx logo between, I believe it's the, um, the E and the and E and the X, <clears throat> something like that. I'm trying to picture it in my mind, but those kinds of things are, are nice to see, right? Uh, this logo here, now you might think, well, what does it have to do with drawing? Well, um, this is the kind of thing where using one of my custom brushes, I, I drew this in a single pass. And because I, you know, feel confident that I can get that proportion right and everything, it only took a few a few shots and then I got what I wanted. But to be able to do something like this requires a bit of speed. Because I wanted it to feel like I was getting it in one shot. Um, so just doing it over and over again, you know, a few times until it feels right. Uh, this is a really satisfying thing. It can work as a logo. But out of context, um, this might not make any sense. This is for my new app called Lines of Zen. So we have here an L and a Z. Lines of Zen is a meditative drawing application we hope to have on the, in the iTunes store within a couple of weeks. Um, so to create the app uh, icon for it and the logo for the brand and so on, I wanted it to just look sort of like, um, you know, Japanese uh, sumi-e brush lettering and calligraphy, and that's for the, the thick and the thin. So I actually did use, in fact, um, in the uh, Keith Haring brush set, which I may or may not have loaded at the moment. I'll check and see. Here we go. There are uh, three nice Sumi brushes in there, and I believe it was the second one that I used uh, for this, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, I think that was the one. Anyway, thin, thick, thin, thick. You can see I had to like try a bunch of times to just feel like I got it right. But what's nice is the line breaks apart there on the edges, etc. And that's the nice thing about this kind of a brush. So I can control some of that with pen tilt. If you haven't uh, grabbed those Keith Haring brushes, got good news for you. They are actually available on the brush set, uh, site to download. Um, for a little while there, we at Adobe were wondering, we didn't know if we were gonna be able to keep the Keith Haring brushes available to, for everybody past the first year of that promotion, but uh, the folks over at the Keith Haring Foundation were generous and said, sure, um, we love that you, we have these tools that are inspired by Keith and you may absolutely um, allow them to be uh, part of the Adobe Brush Library. So thank you to them. And uh, hey, you all get to benefit um, with these nice Sumi brushes and a whole bunch of other beauties. So give those a try, please. And remember, just come over here to get more brushes, okay? In that little drop-down menu in the top right corner of your brushes panel, get more brushes. You'll find the Keith Haring brushes there along with a whole bunch of other ones, all right? Okie dokie, and now back to... Uh, there we go, so yeah, there we go. And then of course, you know, thinking about color choices, zen, calm, meditation, relaxation, cool colors, that's what we're after. Blues and greens, blues and greens, okay? So a question mark here is for when we decide we're gonna do our little cat and coffee thing here. It's gonna be a coffee brand. I thought it'd be cool, just call it Black Cat Coffee, and maybe that already exists. I don't know all the coffee companies out there, but um, we'll get to it. So, uh, moving on, I wanna talk about this little guy. So, this is a fun little project. Um, I did a, a sort of a mascot slash logo thing for uh, a bank here in town, and um, this was just a sketch to approve sort of the 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 character. All right, so nothing nothing too fancy here, just a, a pencil sketch. And I want you to look at um, this little area here where we we're going through um, these five different options for the head design. Now again. One of those things about uh, being able to, to draw means you can quickly come up with variations on a theme, right? And make adjustments just drawing with a pencil um, to get to a place where you have some options for the client. And um, if I were having to try and design all this and make paths and yada, 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 this would be a real pain. But to just take a pencil and draw 
And you can tell probably that I used symmetry mode here when I was drawing, which is of course so zippy right up here. Go ahead and turn symmetry on when you're drawing and you can mirror the left or the right uh, business when you're drawing. Um, just check in here for, uh, oh hey wait, that's so cool of you to put that link in there for Lines of Zen, thanks man. Um, oh, is Mercurial a fan of cats? Cool, 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 cool. Uh, nice. All right, so so yeah, this is where we got to here, and then um, here is the sort of hero pose for this. Now, it is a full-blown illustration, but again, this is the kind of thing you want to think about. If you're going to do a full-blown illustration that has to be used really small, use a heavy line. This is just an idea, but I recommend it. See this? Look at this line weight I'm using for the exterior of the character for the silhouette. And then also notice that we're using a, a, a three-quarter view that allows me to see details like tail, both feet, the idea that we have two arms, okay, and then some details of the head. So if, again, I were to um, silhouette this out, right, so let's try this. We'll go to um, select subject, all right, see if Photoshop can figure this one out. There, it did a good job, yay, okay, and then we just go and, and we knock that in like this. Okay, we should still hopefully be able to read this as a character, okay, right there. And if people have any familiarity with or have seen this character before, they'll be like, oh, hey, I know what that is. It's that Triceratops guy, right? Okay, so there you go. Um, yeah, and uh, here's something fun. So another thing about being able to play with something like this is all the stuff you can then do later. So if you're working on some kind of a branding project or a logo project for a client and you are in fact an illustrator and you have drawing skills of some kind, what's nice is you can pitch the client for more work. You can say, well, you know, I'm glad you like that logo. Hey, um, what other materials do you need potentially that involve an illustration that might require uh, the use of this character, yada, yada, yada. And then you can, you know, take that billing number and you can double it or you can triple it, or you can quadruple it, and make this client very happy because they don't have to go to all these different vendors and different people for different things. They can just keep coming back to you and say, hey, let's do this, let's do that. Um, an example of that would be, for example, um, let's see if I can find it here. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, so here, um, I did a, coloring sheet for kids that they handed out at uh, some events using this character. And you can see how, how fun something like this would be. Um, of course, I had a good time with this. I'll open this up so we can get a closer look at it. Um, you know, something like drawing this little scene um, and then hiding a bunch of stuff in it. So I hid, you know, there's a, there's a hat right here, a pair of scissors over there. You know, here's a coffee mug right there. Little pencil down there, a pair of glasses. I used to love this stuff as a kid. This sort of finding hidden things. There's a fish right here. Um, so giving you know, giving myself basically a chance to do something like this um, as a as a project for the same client was great. And this did in fact come out of me saying, you know, well now that we've got this phase done, what else do you need? And then getting getting them to uh, do some more cool stuff. So. Um, you know, think about that. Think about that. Can you, you know, do some more projects like this where you can uh, kind of move past um, the original phase, whatever it is, the, the logo design, and do more stuff? I mean, I've, I've known people who've done logos, for example, for a little, uh, for restaurants or whatnot, or coffee shops and things, and said, hey, do you need a mural? Do you need a mural for the interior? And then, bam, they get that big fat mural money. You know what I'm saying? Um, it is fun for adults. I agree, Alessandra. You don't have to be a kid to do these activity sheets. Why not? Why not? Okay, um, and then not only that, but um, here's another thing. Uh, check this out. So, um, got a chance to also... Now, I'm not an animator. Don't, please, don't uh, mistake me for one. I'm not, I'm not gonna go out there and say, Hey, everybody, look at me. I'm a great animator. Um, but I can make stuff move. And uh, they had a little um, screen that they were going to have where it was just, they wanted they wanted to just be endlessly on repeat uh, in the background for something. And I'm sorry, I can't remember the specifics of what all that was, but 
Um, but something like this is I could take the character and then do some animation with it. And of course, you know, animation, that costs more money. So um, here's a little, have him slide in and wave. And then I can't remember what else he does. Let's see, I think he pops, pops his head up here and there. There he is, you know. This is all just done Photoshop, frame by frame animation, simple Photoshop animation. Very easy to do if you've ever used the Photoshop timeline. Um, I also use Character Animator for this part where he walks across because I, I assigned, you know, made him a little skeleton basically. A moped there, and then I think, is there anything else or is that it? I think that's it. Um, so yeah, so you see what I'm talking about? You can really, you can really, uh, make stuff happen with these with these projects where you can expand and expand. Um, not all the time, but I just wanted to mention that as a thing that you should think about uh, when it comes to um, pitching your services to clients, especially if the client's happy with what you've done, right? Think about that. Um, we're, gonna, we're gonna pop it on over here to uh, this other project. So here we have, um, this brand identity for um, uh, this this uh, cool product, which um, I don't think I can still really say what it was. I think I have to keep that under wraps, but I can still show the artwork. That is fine. Um, and uh, so this character, Tommy, um, and uh, this was a presentation to the client just sort of showing these four ideas for the character. Now, we knew that the character was really the main thing, it was a character design project, but there is a logo element where up front we stated that we wanted to make sure that um, whatever we settled on for the character, we could take the head of that character and make it sort of the logo for um, the finished uh, deal. So knowing that ahead of time was important so that I could sketch up some things where I, I knew that I could take whatever the design was and in the end I could simplify it a little bit, um, draw it in such a way again with that like thicker silhouette, make it recognizable, make the angle, the head angle correct, yada yada. So here are the four gators I did. Making notes here about, I say three quarters is best and that's because I'm thinking ahead and letting the client know that I think it's important for us to be able to see that silhouette clearly. Um, I think this guy was funny, Mohawk guy. But we had this guy, and then we had um, this one, which I liked because it was simple, simple kind of a design. I felt like you could do more with it, you know. And then uh, we, we moved forward with that, and this is the original one, and I, I explained some differences here. And this is another good thing when you're doing this kind of project, is to help walk the client through stuff, not just by talking about it, but actually making notes on the art so they understand. We're saying here the, the line under the eye plays up the happy eye shape, so that little eye is kind of, we're making them squint just a tiny bit. It's a happy eye. Um, and this open mouth thing is a bit more fun, party time, haha. You know, um, and then here we have a, a more accurate head shape for a gator, but still streamlined. Little things like this, okay? And the final, uh, where's the final? Let's see here if I can find the, the final result of that one. Um, bear with me here. I think I have it. Yeah, here we go. Let's see if I can. Could not complete your request because Photoshop does not recognize this type of file. It's interesting. It's actually a TIFF. <laughs> oh, what are you doing to me, Photoshop? Come on, don't do that. It's a TIFF for crying out loud. All right, we'll try it with preview. These things happen. I don't always understand. And preview doesn't want to open it either. Oh, all right. Oh, there it goes. All right. So uh, here, you know, here's the final. Now let's look at the importance of a few of the things we already talked about a moment ago. Look at the silhouette here. Okay. Let's see if I can let's see if Photoshop will be nice to me and let me um, paste this into this document. Yay. Okay. Cool. That's what I'm talking about. All right. Bring that over there. Take a look at this. 
Um, so again, silhouette, 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 silhouette. My, my thinking here was that at some point we get to where basically, um, you know, all this business could be silhouetted out. Okay. And, you know, we might leave just the eye or something. Something like that. So that um, you could have, if you needed it, some kind of a version of this that was just pure black shape that you stamp somewhere or whatever. Um, but in the meantime, I had this, this drawing that was just black and white. I showed with the gray and then we have this nice full color one. And with the circle, I like it very much. I like that this just kind of stands out as sort of a clear, fun little character design, but also logo. And, you know, you get down nice and small, you should still be able to see it just fine. Okay. Uh, let's see any questions here. Fresco Animation, Bruce is asking uh, to Haley. And yeah, Haley, boy, I tell you, Fresco animation is so easy. Just check out my tutorial on YouTube or Behance about it. It's so fun, so easy, so quick. You have motion paths. You can just make stuff move all over the screen, literally just by drawing a line, a path for it to animate along. You can do multiples of that. You can do it randomly. You can do all It's so cool. Um, Steve says, oh, what's a TIFF, says Bruce. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's just an image uh, file format, but it definitely should be read by Photoshop, so that's weird that it's saying no. All right, um, there you go. I'm gonna blame Mac OS because I just updated it a couple weeks ago and everything's been a little weird. All right, so there. Um, I hope that's uh, helpful to show all these little examples and I've got plenty, plenty more, but I thought, why don't we take a little time, do a little, little exercise ourselves, just trying to sort of think our way through a little logo uh, project. Why not, why not hide this now? Um, and let's uh, let's go ahead and grab a little pencil. I think that'd be the right thing to do. So many pencils to play with. Um, you know what I really enjoy drawing with is that uh, winter 2022 brush set that came out recently. Remember we have these three new pencils in here. We have these tilty pencils. These are just so fun to play with. Look at that, so fun. Um, you can shade with them. Ooh, I love it. For those of you who like the uh, the Fresco default pencil, highly recommend drawing with this because it'll give you the same kind of a range of thick to thin and dark to light and all that good good stuff. All right, so for this um, this cat thing, so I thought it's called okay, it's called Black Cat. Coffee, black cat coffee, black cat coffee. Um, and some ideas I had would maybe be like, so we have a mug, sort of a mug shape maybe. Um, and you know, that to me uh, also has sort of a, you know, cat head kind of shape, so we could. Maybe we have the mug like this. Something as simple as, as that might be a cool logo. You know, that's it. And then you put the little handle there, right? And once you do a sketch, you know, the nice thing is you can go ahead and duplicate it and then start messing with it. So for example, I might want to just sort of color all this in. And 
then just look at it as a shape. Okay. Same with this, we'll just go ahead and make that one solid little shape. Now we have a nice little starting point. And then we can do things like decide, okay, how, how, how would the handle look if we did something like this instead? Draw, erase, draw, erase, draw, erase. Same thing I'd do on a piece of paper or a napkin or a piece of tracing paper or whatever if I'm just kind of noodling and trying to come up with ideas. And normally, by the way, this is how big I work for stuff like this. I just do teeny tiny little stuff. And the reason being that I like to work really small when I sketch for logos because I want to make sure that whatever I'm sketching doesn't get so complex that it won't be legible at a small size when you resize it. Uh, Stephanie, hey, what's up? Yeah, who doesn't like a cat mug? Um, thanks, Elizabeth. That's really nice of you. I love those office hours, guys. They're so fun. So fun. Um, right -o. Yeah, so then... Uh, this, this right here could just be it. That could be actually it, maybe, but... Um, you know, let's just leave that alone for a minute. We'll size these down here. We'll just take all these and we'll just go... Bye bye. Down you go. Um, and then we'll we'll take this one here. Slide it over this way. Oops. And I want to see how subtle I can be with the ears here. I want to see if I can just kind of do a little bit of a bump. And maybe we want to kind of like square off uh, the sides here like this. Maybe not quite that subtle, but... And up, up, kind of up against the edge more like that. I think that's kind of a nice shape there. Get that just a bit higher. And of course, if I wanted this to be perfect, I would use symmetry mode, right? Right. Um, but we're just we're just sketching. We're just sketching here. All right, and then we're gonna take this. And we're going to um, look at this overall shape. Now, here's a nice little thing you could do. Just add a little sort of a section there at the bottom to clearly say, you know, it's a mug. A little bit at the bottom where can remain flat on the table. Okay. There's one idea, this mug idea with the cat. It's kind of fun. And now, you know, you could do stuff like this. You could just go boing, boing, make a little, little cat eyes, right? That'd be kind of a fun.
thing, right? I don't know if you all can hear the violin in the background. Many of you who watched this before, this master class, know that my kids are often playing violin in the background. So that's kind of fun. All right, what do we got here? Um, hi there, I finally caught a live video. Love the kitty monk. Hey, thanks, Ellen. Midnight gives it a paw up. Midnight must be a cat. Midnight must be a cat. All right, and then we look at this. We say, hey, what do we need to do with this? Maybe eh, make it a little smaller, center it. Okay, so that's kind of fun. That's kind of getting somewhere. I don't know, we could keep playing with that, right? Um, but we want to have some other ideas. Um, so maybe we do this, we go boom, boom. We do our little mug shape here. And then, We can take that and um, why don't we explore some other sort of cat-like sort of things. Uh, you know. Tail. Hmm. I don't know if I can make that work the way I want. Maybe if we just do this. Now, let's see if I just get rid of this for a minute, um, and maybe we try... Having the tail do something a bit more sort of like a handle. kind of fun and you know I don't know if the whiskers are necessary but let's uh, let's do this we'll put a little asterisk by that one that might be kind of a fun one to think about later um, this one's kind of fun I do this all the time by the way I just put little asterisks near things that I think like oh that's something that could work. Um, and then let's see, so another thing to do is to play with just lines, you know. Um,
So I look at that and then I think, okay, let's do this. Let's go bum, 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 bum. And then let's go like this. We'll go boom. Oops. Go out, down. And then. I think like a, I'm trying to do like a B, like a letter B, you know? Could be like that. Black cat coffee. And for this, maybe we switch to a line that's a bit less. So we can do with this here. something like that maybe you know here's something to play with just as an idea we figure something out there um, you know we you can't really have a logo that has sort of an L shape like this that's probably problematic um, but just as this is the thing is what you want to do is just have ideas jot them down and then take them like, to a different race. Okay, something I can do with lettering now, I wanna think about, or a silhouette, or something like that, you know, something just like. Or like that. Thinking about shapes like that that are really simple. And of course, the thing to do here would be get some reference and look at like the actual shape of a cat's body. And, um, make these more accurate. Something like that, you know, it's kind of a nice thing where you have these little spaces that you leave open. And then, you know, it would just be like black cat, uh, black cat, coffee, you know, that's definitely one I'd like to look at. Um, taking a little further. Okay, so we have a couple of different ideas here. What else can we do? Let's see. Um, Bruce, maybe incorporate the tail. Wink. Uh, for, oh yeah, well, hey, you're reading my mind, weren't you? There we go. I don't know, between these two, I think, I think I'm probably leaning more there, but it's hard to decide. Um, you don't have any cats, says Alessandra, but love them. Yeah, I love cats. They're, they're super decorative. They're the most decorative pet Anything they do is pretty, you know, they go lie down somewhere, whatever they're doing, they look cool doing it. Decorative animals. That's what I feel like. Uh... All right, so you can see how this process works. You just keep on sketching, sketching, uh, sketching. What else can we do? So thinking about these letters, you know, uh, black cat, um, is there a way to make some kind of a shape with those letter forms that feels like, a cat, you know, the bee. Or do we do a,
you know, something like that. It's just a letter B, but can we make it feel sort of like a the body and head of a cat or something? Um, remember, when you do something like this, do not be discouraged. Don't be like, oh, I didn't get it. It doesn't work. This is the kind of thing you do that then you evolve into something. So like you take something like this and then you go, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take that idea and we're just going to keep playing with it, right? So then you knock it back and you look at what you've got and you say, okay, what can I do to make this feel, first of all, make sure it reads as a letter B, right? So cat's tail is longer, so we're going to do this. We're going to come up and we're going to go one, two, B. And now people might might see that B right there. We can say, okay, is that better? Are we getting somewhere? Now we're starting to get cat and B, right? So what first at first felt kind of like, hmm, not sure that's working. This all of a sudden has some potential right here. This has some potential. So you you know you you can you can play. You can again do I would like to just keep duplicating, right? Duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. Um so you don't lose where you've been, okay? But you can kind of play with stuff. So maybe we change these proportions just a little. And just look at that and say how we, how we do in there. All right, and now you start to get somewhere. And if this is problematic here, you know, can you change it into something like that? Okay. And then can you do this? Can you take it and can you skew it so that the B is upright? Okay. And then we take the rest of these elements here and we redraw them but we're going to be we're going to be careful now about this we're going to make sure that this is more subtle at the top here try that again so you go maybe 1 2 3 make it a letter B like that. So you start to just play with different different ways to make that work. Um, and it can be done. All right, now let's look. Maybe the angle one's better. I think this has a bit more personality, but it's worth doing these kinds of experiments. And from this, you could evolve it into something else where instead of having the tail over here, I say, well, something about this makes me feel like, because of the shapes here, um, this is the back of the cat here on the right. Okay, so I'm actually going to take that B and I'm going to complete that, I'm going to just complete that shape like this around and across, right? And there's our letter B. for black cat coffee. And then we make the C out of the tail, right? Or something like that. Black cat, let's see. And maybe we do this. No, it's not working, but that's okay. Come back to that, there's something to look at there. So far though, I think this is actually, I think this has some potential here. Let's take it, copy it, we come back here, okay? And we just pop it on in there so it's part of our group of ideas. 
And then we come back here. We don't need this guy anymore. We sort of took him where he needed to go. And there you are. See that? So a few nice little things to play with here. So this is this is fun. This could go somewhere. This I don't know yet, but this could go somewhere. Um, one of these ideas could be kind of fun. Could work pretty nicely. And so we have three or four little concepts to keep pushing on. Um, and there's obviously a lot more you could do. But in you know the span of 25 minutes, we've certainly gone from zero to something. And drawing with logos, this is what's possible. You can draw and draw and draw and draw and sketch and quickly get ideas down and you're approaching it from a different angle like what is that you're not thinking type first you're not thinking like big shape blocky shapes and stuff like that you're not thinking like that you're thinking about drawing um to me that's that's exciting it's an exciting way to go about it so thanks for hanging out with me everybody i hope you have a absolutely lovely weekend um and uh the weather's nice wherever you are and you've got uh, family and friends and other people to just spend some quality time with. And if not, hope you have a good book. All right. Take care. Thanks for watching. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Be kind. I'll say ciao for now.